15th, 2019. Your speakers this morning will be Mayor Richard C. Irving, followed by Fire Chief Gary Credence, and then wrapping up this morning will be Police Chief Kristen Zeman, then we'll open for questions. Mayor Richard Irving. Good morning, and thank you for coming out today to reflect on the past year. In the song, Seasons of Love, from the Broadway musical Rent, the lyrics begin with 525,600 minutes. How do you measure a year? The past year certainly has been one measured in ways I never have imagined. February 15, 2019, forever changed Aurora. Is what a relatively calm, slightly warmer Friday afternoon where we were wrapping up a long week when the calls began to come through. From that minute, nothing would be the same. In one moment, we became that city. That very same city we watched on the news over and over, community after community, year after year, dealing with the horrific mass shootings. That very city that would become a household name the new hashtag, the name which would fill the last blank of the countless prayers for posts on social media. The city of my birth, the city where many of us standing up here call home, the city of lights. On the afternoon of February 15th, the lights were dimmed, darkened, and some sadly extinguished in the midst of one of the worst days in our city's history. Russell Byer, Vicente Juarez, Clayton Parks, Josh Pinker, Trevor Weiner. Let's have a moment of silence for the lives tragically taken from us that day. But there was a bright light that showed through the dark cloud in the face of danger and death. Heroes emerged but not with capes, with uniforms. We are forever grateful for the fine women and men of the Aurora Police Department, the Aurora Fire Department, all of the responding public safety officials that came in from miles around to serve and protect our community. We say a special thanks to our five wounded officers of the Aurora Police Department, John Sabolski, Marco Gomez, Adam Miller, Reynaldo Rivera, and James Zeger. Let's please give them a round of applause. <laughs> Although we have certainly tried to show them our great appreciation over the past year, no words can truly express to them our gratitude for putting themselves in harm's way. You know, later that evening, that, that day, I spent time at the hospital visiting officers, and one of the survivors, Mr. Tim, Will Tim Williams, as I stood by Tim's bedside and, and he recounted the details of what he thought would be the last moments of his life, I was reminded yet again how quickly things can change in the matter of a minute. We continue to pray for Tim and all of those who were in Pratt that afternoon that had to live through such a nightmare. But we stand here today not simply to recount what happened, but to remember our triumph over tragedy. Over the past year, we have worked collectively to turn hurt into hope and pain into progress. This community has taken one of the darkest days in Aurora and found the ability to pull light out of that darkness. The lesson we learned have made us more unified, more stable, more safe, and a better community. How do we measure a year? We measure it in strength. By the end of the day on February 15th, we had already become Aurora strong. And that strength has continued to multiply over the year. The Aurora Strong banner brought our community together as never before. We came together to raise more than 500,000 locally and another 500,000 nationally for nearly $1.1 million in support for those families of the victims who lost their lives and other victims of this senseless tragedy. Out of this strength came a new sense of unity and community. The 
community rally around our first responders, our police, our fire, and 911 operators to show our thanks and support in a variety of ways. But what I personally noticed is how our first responders simply wanted to put attention right back on the victims and their families. For instance, when money was raised for the Aurora Fire Department, Firefighters donated tens of thousands of dollars right back to the Aurora Strong Community Fund. Our strength saw us rally around each other to support programs and initiatives over the past month. How do we measure a year? We measure it in service. We've seen this dramatic increase in volunteerism in the city of Aurora that is rooted in the response to Henry Pratt. From youth to adults and all over town, people are asking the question, how can I help Aurora? And then acting on it. Wherever there has been a call made for service opportunities, hundreds have responded. This is our Aurora. This is the Aurora that was bruised but not broken. How do we measure a year? We measure it in safety. Aurora is stronger and safer because of the lessons learned at Henry Pratt. We put those lessons into practice and have implemented new procedures in both Aurora Fire and Aurora Police Departments. It was a horrible day that would have been much more horrific had it not been for the bravery of the Aurora Police and the Aurora Fire. They handled things in the most professional and courageous manner and never once thought about the danger to their own lives as they entered in the building and saved the lives of others. They've been heralded all across the country as some of the best teams in law enforcement in the United States, and we certainly agree. Thank you for all always keeping Aurora safe and sound. Let's give our first responders a round of applause. How do we measure a year? We measure it in the solemn remembrance and reflections. We must never forget what happened to Henry Pratt on February 15th and the lives that were lost and forever impacted. Today we stand here in the Art and History Center in this beautiful new Henry Pratt Memorial Tribute organized by the Aurora Historical Society. Thank you to John Jaros and Mary Clark Orman for providing this space for our community to remember and reflect. This space will be open for the rest of the month, Wednesday through Saturday from 12 to 4 p.m. and a special requests for tours. On Saturday, February 15th, the anniversary of the tragedy, I encourage the community to visit, remember, and reflect. On that day, we'll provide an opportunity for you to leave cards and notes for the families of Russell Byer, Vincente Juarez, Clayton Parks, John Pinkert, and Trevor Wayner. And for our first responders, we'll make sure the cards and notes make it to them. Also on Saturday the 15th, all flags on city properties will fly at half staff in commemoration of the one year anniversary. Our chiefs will also have additional details on what will happen on Saturday. 525,600 minutes. What a year we had. In some ways it feels just like yesterday. In other ways it feels like generations have passed. February 15, 2019 shook Aurora, but it didn't shatter Aurora. February 15, 2019 bruised Aurora, but it didn't break Aurora. February 15, 2019 defined a new version of Aurora, but didn't destroy Aurora. February 15, 2019 didn't leave us Aurora scared. It left us Aurora strong. Now, please welcome our Aurora Fire Chief Gary Kranitz to the microphone, who will be followed by Aurora Police Chief Kristen Zeman. And after that, we'll take questions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I knew this day was coming. Uh, our, the year goes by quickly for some of us and others, the, the families, I'm sure, it did not and I'm very sad for that. Uh, reaching back to reflect on the year, um, that day quickly became evident that our lives in the city of Aurora changed. Uh, that 
afternoon, Deputy Chief, Chief Gilbert and I were having lunch together. We ran into a retired firefighter who was retired so long we didn't even know him. And we got this um, discussing the job and our experiences. DC Gilbert and I have been through a lot of things in our careers, but nothing could have prepared us for that radio call we heard shortly after that discussion of an active shooter at Henry Pratt. Henry Pratt. That day forever changed me and the Aurora Fire Department. The fire department and the people of this city have continued to stand strong in support of both the families of the victims and the injured police officers. Their names will be said many times here today, but I believe they need to be spoken again. Trevor Weiner, Vincente Juarez, Clayton Parks, Josh Pinker, and Russell Byer, you'll never be forgotten. And those police officers, Officer Sabolski, Officer Gomez, Officer Miller, Officer Rivera, Rivera, and Officer Zigar. Thank you, APD, for being our heroes. I've never been more proud in my career to be an Aurora firefighter than this terrible day. The strength and professionalism displayed by every member of this department was incredible. Since that tragic day, the Aurora Fire Department has built on these lessons and we've learned. We've become stronger, we've become more unified with the police department, we've become more efficient, and we are far better prepared. I pray that we'll never have to respond to another event like this. But if we do, we will do it with the same care and professionalism that was exhibited that day. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. February 15th at 1.24, that call came in of a mass shooting. And it was one of those surreal moments where I wasn't quite sure what I was hearing over the radio. And as we stumbled to get to the scene, really tr truly stumbling out of the police department, um, you know, jumping in our squad cars to get there as fast as we possibly could. And as we were on our way to the scene, what seemed like a moment that would last forever in time was listening one by one to my officers getting shot. I don't quite know how to describe that experience. I knew once we got there, we had a job to do. And I have to say now that a year has passed, we've had so many people asking us the question, what is it like? What has it been like this past year? And the truth is from the outside looking in, that year, um, doesn't feel like a year for us because we're still going through it. We still have officers that have not returned to work from their injuries. Those heroes are fighting to get back to work. And I am grateful every day that they are still here with us, walking the earth. And that gratitude is, is it's a wonderful feeling and it's quickly followed by a lot of pain. The hardest day of my life was having to stand in front of the families of these beautiful human beings that just went to work that morning and never came home. To see the pain in their eyes. And people have asked us, well, what makes you know, these victims different? In, in law enforcement, we have, um, we count things, we have data, right? You know, how many shootings or shootings up or shootings down? And when you really look at that data, those numbers, they're attached to human beings. And I never want to forget that. And that is the one thing that I have learned over this past year is that real human beings were walking the earth and are no longer with us. And the pain that these families are feeling, it doesn't feel like a year. It still feels like they are stuck in that moment in time. I never want to forget them. I've had the, the honor of representing my city and my police department to go to the, to the White House for the State of the Union. And I have their names in my pocket close to my heart. And every day I think of them. But that day, I know lives were saved because of first responders. I am so proud of the men and women of not only the Aurora Police Department, but the Aurora Fire Department. This city should be very proud of its first responders, as well as those who worked behind the scenes, those telecom operators that were the glue that held it together. It seemed very chaotic and yet it was completely organized chaos because we have prepared for that moment. 
And I really want to say to the city of Aurora how grateful I am for allowing us to have that preparation. There are a lot of cities that the first thing they cut in the budget is training. And I've said it before and I will say it again, you play like you practice. We do not rise to the level of our expectations, we fall to the level of our training. And those officers and those firefighters that day uh, it did exactly that. And fortunately, that expectation was high for all of us. We had just started training, rescue task force training with our fire department uh, prior to this incident happening. And that is the preparation that led us to perform so well together that day. So I say again, you should be very proud of your first responders in the city of Aurora. And thank you for that. And when I think of the heroic actions that day, not just of our police officers that went in one by one and took fire and continued going, I think of their mindset. And that goes along with that preparation. It's that mindset of survival. You had uh, Jim Zegar shot in the neck and, and he had to be physically pulled from the scene. And when I later spoke with him, I asked him, why did you fight uh, to get out of the scene? And his words to me were this, he said, I knew that I was shot and he said it started to go black around the edges and he thought just put me in there send me back into that building to take care of that threat so so I I do not die in vain that was that was his last thought uh, before we we grabbed him and threw him into a squad car you had Adam Miller that day that was shot in the eye and you hear him saying I'm shot but I'm still in the fight that is the mindset that we have here in the city of Aurora. So when you talk about Aurora Strong, that is the epitome of what Aurora Strong is. And speaking of that, the reason that we have come this far and we are strong is because the community wrapped their loving arms around us. When you look at this memorial and you see these signs, they are just a microcosm of what we were surrounded with at our fire department and our police department. And those were the things that helped us sit up just a little bit taller and helped us get through this. So we are Aurora Strong and we are going to come back from this stronger than we have ever been. Uh, but we are always going to remember these five beautiful souls that are no longer with us and the families that have to endure life without them. But once again, we are Aurora Strong. Thank you so very much. Questions from the media. Have you changed anything as far as any way you train and do it, other kinds of things for this kind of event? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one of the things that had came out, we of course had a, a, an objective entity come in, FEMA came in and uh, provided us an after action. And I'm, I'm really uh, happy and proud to say that there were only a few things that we needed to tweak. Uh, a few of them were uh, had to, to do with communications. And one thing that when you have a major incident like this and you have pe people coming, especially first responders from all over the state, it becomes difficult to communicate with one another along uh, that across the platform. So we have developed patches where we can now talk with each other via our radio. Other than that, they were small things that we had to shore up as far as details and incident command. And then our continuation, what this really showed me is that it validated the level of our training and the fact that we need to continue to train together. We learned something from each mass shooting, sadly. I, I, I hope we never have to do it again, but every mass shooting, we take that and we learn something from it. And one of the things that we learned over the years is that we can't have our, our paramedics, our firefighters staging outside. We need them right there with us because lives are at stake. Moments, seconds matter. And so we're continuing our training together as first responders in this city. No, those, the communications issues were uh, at the scene because so many different agencies responded, so many different fire departments, so many different um, police entities and law enforcement that uh, we have taken steps um, to address those multi-agency communication issues and we've uh, corrected almost all of those at this point. Mayor, is there anything specific as far as, uh, aside from what you mentioned on Saturday, any sort of a service or any presentation of any sort. What I mentioned is, is um, what will be going on that uh, will be city functions. I expect there will be many other groups and organizations praying and doing uh, things in remembrance of the fall on that day. Can you explain the decision why the city did not have a formal observance on that day? That day is going to be special in remembrance 
for those loved ones who, those families who won't ever see their loved ones again. It, it'll, it'll be a day that, that we all solemnly remember the tragedy that occurred in, in a city where we never expected that it would happen, although we had seen countless news and, and media spots over the years where this happened time after time, city after city, but never thought that it would ever happen in our home. And I think it's a time that we should all reflect, not just for Aurora, for all those cities where this has happened. And unfortunately, with what's happening in the world, all the cities that this may happen in the future. So we'll fly our flags at half mass that day in remembrance. Chief Zingman, this wasn't the last mass shooting in the United States for the last year. Okay. Have you had any contact with other chiefs or other departments on how you handled it or just them asking questions or you offering advice? Yes, yeah, so the one thing that happens in law enforcement and in, in first responders, when an incident happens, we try to get together after action, all of the things that we can learn going forward. I have been fortunate enough to be invited all over the nation to talk about this particular incident, what things that we, we did correct, one, and the things that we needed to work on, and to talk about the training and to emphasize training. Uh, furthermore, I've actually had conversations with uh, private corporations and presentations to places just like Pratt, uh, that, and I always tell them, insert any business here, just so we can start looking at a threat assessment. The thing that bothers me the most from that day, uh, that the thing that still keeps me up at night is that in that morning, that shooter made a comment that if he were called into the office that day, he was basically going to expletive blow up the place. And not one person came forward with that. Not one person uh, went to a supervisor. Not one person called 911. It is my mission to change that culture of, of, you know, of speaking out. And, you know, and I think that in this particular case, you know, this individual was angry all the time. Oh, and that's just you know, how he was. But it's my mission. It's our mission going forward that we, we talk to other, other police departments and, and other fire departments. Okay. Uh, uh, the chief and I have gone um, in tandem to train. So anything that we can learn from this going forward, uh, we most certainly will. And what that does is it changes our tactics as well. But what, um, so in your mission to get across, speak up, why do you suppose people didn't speak up? I think it's the culture of. I think it is, in, in having this conversation uh, with many businesses, it's you have this, this culture of, I don't want to cause any problems. I don't want to be the, quote, whistleblower. And so what we've talked about is developing a threat assessment. And you know, not only that, but maybe different ways of, of terminations. This was, a, this was a case of a termination. And in this particular instance, you know, do you need to call a person in if you feel like there's a threat? So there's a lot of questions to be asked. That's not my wheelhouse. That would be, you know, for human resources, of course. But a lot of questions arise in that, you know, if, if your spidey senses are tingling about something, then you need to say something and let us sift through it. I would rather someone call and it turn out to be nothing than the situation that, that we had. But again, try, you know, try telling that to those families that day, you know, that, well, you know, you can't play what if, but, you know, we have to be better going forward as, as just in, in consciousness and changing the culture of reporting. Chief, could you account for uh, the officers who were injured where we're at with each of them? Would you, is that something you could do? Sure, one of them has retired. In fact, the, I mentioned Jim Zegar earlier. He was, uh, he actually, he was the first one to come back to work and, and he actually retired just this past December. And so we have Officer Rivera who is, is back with us. Officer Miller, who was, he was the one who shot in the eye. Um, and w when I say that these, these men are heroes, uh, they are, uh, they truly are that. They've also been able to bring some le levity and some realism. When Officer Miller came back to work on midnight shift, he brought a bag of chocolate eyeballs with him and handed them, <laughs> them out. Um, <laughs> Officer Sobolski is still not back to work, and um, and then Officer Marco Gomez is still working through his injuries through physical therapy. So we're hoping that uh, uh, the last two will, will get back to work as soon as possible. Thank you for asking about that. Any additional questions from the media? Uh, Chief Zima, what would you say to students who want to feel more safe in their communities and make a difference? 
first of all, I would say number one is to be conscious. Is is just that is this you know kind of the culture of of you know not reporting. There's a lot of fear, and people that I've I've spoken with um, are fearful of coming forward. They're feel, fearful of maybe retaliation. Fearful of you know I don't want to be that whistleblower, that tattletale. Um, get involved in uh, legislation, the things that you want to see changed. As you know, uh, after this incident, I mean this this shooter had a revoked void card, and so we've been at the table in discussions with our legislators. Get involved in the issues that matter so that going forward we can prevent this. So can you speak to what it was like that so many people come forward and reach out to the city in response to what happened? That was an absolutely amazing feeling that so many people in Aurora and around Aurora and throughout the country uh, stepped up to attempt try to make us whole. You, you never, there's no amount of money that's gonna make these families whole. And they, I'm sure they would want their loved ones back, but just to know that there are people around the country that feel their pain, that understand their pain, and, and, and want to help alleviate as much as possible was an amazing feeling. And I'll say to that young person, you know, tell your friends, if, if, you, know, if you know something, say something. Um, it can save a life. And it, definitely would have in this case. If you know something, say something. Was Pratt invited here today? Somebody from Pratt? Yes, they, I believe, are going to have their own ceremony. Chief, you want to say something? I, I could actually, you had asked the question earlier about our observance, and uh, I think someone mentioned it earlier, is that we didn't want to make this about us. And so we wanted to make sure that the families took the lead on what they were going to do. And, and we were determined to honor whatever it was that, that their memorial. And so as it turns out, Pratt is going to have their own private memorial they've invited us to. And, and again, we wanted to make sure that the focus was on them. But we will be having a moment of silence at 124 um, over, over our radio and uh, in telecom. And so they will, be, they will be doing that. But we wanted to fall backwards and just let, let the families and, and Pratt um, take the lead. The, 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 the silence over the radio is today or Saturday? That would be on Saturday when it happens, yes. And you mentioned the names as well. Mm -hmm. Yep, and we'll have a moment of silence yeah. from dispatch, yes. Any more questions from the media? Well, thank you all for coming today, and uh, thank you for helping to make Aurora strong. I want to reiterate that this memorial is open Wednesday through Saturday, 12 to 4, by special request. And on Saturday the 15th, 12 to 4, there will be memorial boxes where families and individuals can leave cards, reflections for the individual family members, or for the first responders. Thanks again to John Jaros, to Mary Clark Foreman, the World Historical Society, for hosting us today and this memorial. Thank you to the media for being in attendance. And thank you to the members of our city councils as well. Thank you.